take at the left hand side the lower the least productive conversation is what we call the inauthentic conversation. Inauthentic conversation is there, you know, we were talking about public and private conversations last time. There's what I'm saying in public, but there's definitely what I'm thinking and feeling in private, but I'm not sharing that. Right? And that that typically you know, when that happens, um, you know, you, you, you get people complying and, and you know, or they're not really, you know, they're not really supporting whatever you're saying. They just got to go over it. And so if that happens, and it being that really, great, um, you know, brings down and breaks trust and, and the relationship in a, in a, in a team or organization. It always breaks trust, right? So in a big conversation, it goes something like this, right? Just what I was talking about. There is what I say, but then there is what I think and feel, but do not say, right? So the goal is all on that side of the ledger. If you can disclose what that is, that's very, that's very a lot of times, um, you know, you, you can break it without conversation. So, so I mean, some of you have indicated that you have had inauthentic conversations, right? Can you give me a reason why you have withheld some of the information. Those kind of 
rules, then you know, nobody, no, no business would really function very well. Right? So, but let, let me ask you this: We have in authentic conversations. What do you think this does best to trust? What's that? Good point. There is no mutual legitimacy, and really, so the thing with inauthentic uh, conversation that it always breaks trust. Without communications, always break trust. Whenever you have without communication, it's you know, it will be very hard to build a, a high-performing team. So let me give you an example. So who's going to be Joe and who's going to be Jim? Joe and who's Jim? I need a Jim. I need a Jim. I need a Jim. I need a Jim. There is Jim. Okay, Joe, read, read what you're saying and Jim say. Would you like me to go with you and review the proposal song? Thanks, but I can handle it. I don't need to take the time. When you get back, let me know what Tom said. Okay, when you get back, let me know what Tom said. No, that's, that's fine. So, so, I mean, let's, uh, let's, I mean, those are conversations that are, we have on a daily basis, right? I mean, Dick right now is over uh, at, a, at a customer in Orange County. And he didn't ask me to come along with it because I was going to do the presentation, right? I mean, that's that's normal business, right? Now, so so I want to tell you there's nothing wrong with it, but Joe, tell us what you're really thinking in your left hand conversation. You want me to yes, what do you think? So you see you see what happens here? So so Joe has a completely different perspective on, on why he say what he said. So this public conversation, which we call the right-hand conversation, if you haven't noticed, this is the right-hand, right? <laughs> is different than this left-hand conversation, this is the left-hand, right? So, what do you think, Jim? Like, Jim, when, when you said it, Jim, yes. when you said it, you, you, you didn't say it because cause, um, cause you didn't trust Joe, right? Mm -hmm. So, what would be the power if Joe would tell Jim that another way is thinking? Because right now, Jim has no way of interacting with Joe's thinking. Cause it's, it's, so there is fear, right. but it's all an interpretation, though, right? Because never talked about it, Jim, right? Do you think it's all made up? No, I think in his, in his mind, in his perception, it's real. His perception is real, but is his perception is real. I mean, there's no factual no. data. I mean, in this example, I mean, there's no, no information. There's no factual data at all that would support his thinking, right? So, it's, so 